and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon. Today, I am talking with Michael Davis. Michael, thank you for um, squeezing me into your calendar and spending some minutes with me. My pleasure. Anytime I can speak with another member of the Michael Club, I'm in. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, um, we are going to have a phenomenal conversation because Michael... Um, speaks the same language as Michael in that we're we're both around compelling messages that are clear and concise and that captivate our audiences. He just helps you do it through speaking, whether that's online, virtual stages, or in person. Michael's going to help you create a better presentation that's that's going to really help you connect with your audience better. So I'm not going to steal any more of your thunder, Michael, but I, I want to ask the question, how in the world did you get to doing what you do today? I was humiliated in first grade okay. <laughs> by my teacher. And it was so bad, Michael, that for the next 25 years, I had told myself, I will never put myself in front of a group of people again, because that experience, wow. I was in, humiliated in front of my classmates. Then in the ultimate irony, when I'm 31, I am tasked with giving retirement planning workshops to attract new clients to our firm. I'm a certified financial planner at the time. Okay. Didn't go well yeah. because I had, and I'd forgotten this incident from first grade, but it was in my subconscious. It was yeah. controlling so much of my, my behavior. The evaluations for my workshops were awful. Yeah. I mean, just terrible. The only good one was somebody wrote, Mike has nice hair. There you go. <laughs> that's nice, but that's, that's not work. getting business. That's right. <laughs> and my boss, being the type A that he was, said, well, here's the bottom line. You're a lousy speaker. Your stories suck. Turn this around in 90 days or we got to let you go. Okay, well, what do I do? I'm panicked. Make some phone calls and then finally found the group Toastmasters, which was, and I know this is a cliche, but it was a life-changing moment. Yeah because it set me on a new path. And on that path, I learned that speaking is a learnable skill. Everybody's had a bad experience. It's natural to be afraid to speak yeah. to people, not because public speaking is the number one fear, by the way, it's not. Mm -hmm. The number one fear is fear of public humiliation. Ooh, that's good. Another top fear is fear of walking into a room full of strangers. Okay. What is public speaking? It is the potential to be humiliated in front of a room full of strangers. That's why we're <laughs> intimidated by it. Love it. Love and so, it. So I learned all this. I, I Along the, the way, one skill that I did have is I was willing to be a sponge. Okay. And I was fortunate to meet some individuals who saw that in me. I was willing to do the work, picked up some great mentors along the way, and just over time discovered this is what I'm meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. It felt like a calling once I was able to manage the fear. And then I started having people come to me asking for feedback on their speeches and how do you get over the fear? And it just grew from there. And in 2011, I started this business on a extremely part-time basis. It was one or two hours on the weekend and it just grew from there. And then I went full-time in 2018. Awesome. I love that story. I'm not love that you got humiliated, but we all have a story to share. And what you it's, it's funny you mentioned um everybody's kind of scared of it and and i taught i, I was in toastmasters years ago um we are homeschooling family and instead of doing sports because we're not good at that we did competitive speech and debate for five years i was a speech coach and so something i learned a long time ago is it's okay to have butterflies in your tummy before you speak the secret is to get those butterflies to kind of fly in formation all that to say, everybody's scared. Zig Ziglar was scared. He was nervous until you start speaking and go. And there's an art and there's a methodology. And our audience, as you know, are business owners. And we are constantly doing either in-person presentations, you know, mm -hmm. dinner seminars or something. We're doing live presentations on, on podcasts, virtual stages, or we're doing webinars. All of that boils right. down into speaking and <laughs> We need help. So to start talking with us about what are some of the, the challenges, the roadblocks that most people hit, and they probably don't even know they're hitting it subconsciously. And, and how do you help them just kind of break through so that they're more compelling and they get more appointments after that presentation? Because that's really what they're looking for, right? It's a terrific question. There are several layers to that. Let's start with what we've already discussed, and that is this belief. Let's not buy the myth that it's the worst thing we can do. Now, really, would you rather die yeah. 
yeah. than b- give a speech. I don't think so. Don't think so that. let's let's temper that one a bit. It's okay to be nervous. In fact, if you're not, check your pulse. Yeah. Because if you're not nervous, it means you have nothing emotionally invested in this event. And it's not just because I got to look good. Take the focus off of you when you're speaking, put it on your audience. Yeah, absolutely. As a coach, I'm constantly having to fill a role of coach and audience member, meaning I've got to think like the audience. Mm -hmm. If we're there to serve them, to give them valuable insights, they don't care if you make mistakes. In In fact, mistakes are endearing. As long as you don't make them every 60 seconds. Absolutely. The, the occasional stumble, it just shows you're like them and you're not trying to, to look down on them and be perfect. That was my challenge for 10 years, even after I joined Toastmasters, Michael. I was so insecure. Yeah. And my self-esteem and my feeling of being on a stage was so low that I compensated by making sure the hair, which I got evaluation on, was pretty nice. Let's make sure that's perfect. That's right. Let's make sure that this thing, there's no thing here, and the shoes are shined, and, and I look good. I'm polished. Yeah. And the problem with looking polished, and I discovered this one day while cleaning my office, I had one of those rags, and I was spraying some polish, and I'm dusting, and I looked at the can, and I thought, oh, nothing sticks to polish. Ooh, that's a great line. My message isn't sticking. They remember how I look. They don't remember the thing I said. So if my ego is involved, hey, yeah, you like the way I look. That's not why I'm up there. I'm up there to serve them. So always serve the audience with the message and don't worry about these other factors. Yeah. Be clear in what you're trying to tell them. If you're not clear, they certainly won't be. Yeah. And also do not try to give them everything you know. Yeah. Amen. When I was young and insecure, I had to prove to you I belong there. So I'm going to give you everything I have. That's why people walked out with their heads spinning. Right. Well, and because that leads to confusion. It really mm-hmm. does. Um, and I love to be clear in what you're trying to tell them. Because so many times we are so close to our business and we start using jargon. We start using things and we've lost them. Yes. I, I tell people, I mean, even when we create books for clients, we really want the book to be written kind of kind of at a fifth grade level, fifth to seventh grade level, because it's easy to understand. Um, you've got to be clear in your messaging. So that's awesome. And I love that what you said there about serving the audience, because if you come to something with no passion, you said, check your pulse. My other P was check your passion. If you're not excited to deliver it, it's going to show and your audience is going to go away, right? Yes, absolutely. They are. And- okay. Go ahead. No, no I, I, I want to find. I want to. I want to help business owners go. Okay, is is this happening in your presentations? Is your well, presentation so rote that it's boring? Well, yeah. Here's the thing: we have to prepare. the The, the most uh, valuable tool that you have to control your nerves is preparation. Mm-hmm. The preparation does not mean memorization. Yeah. Get that word out of your, your vernacular if you're going to speak, because memorization means I'm focused on every single word. Yes. And when we do that and we get interrupted or we have a hiccup in our speech, we're done. I don't know where to go. Yeah. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I did okay. it once in front of 450 people and it was yeah. one of the worst experiences of my life. Best teaching opportunity, but at the time it was horrible. That's right. You want to internalize the flow of your talk. Look, you're an expert. The reason I mean, you're listening to this because it's the experts podcast, yeah. but the reason you've been asked to speak is because you know something about a topic that the people in the audience probably don't. Yeah. Don't get caught up in, I've got to know it word for word. Just know the flow. Yeah. Ideally, every time you practice your presentation, it should be a little bit different Yeah. because you're going from a written version to the internalized conversational version. And the more you do it, the more the authentic you comes through. And that's what audiences want. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's when they start really connecting with you. And and one of our, one of my marketing principles that I I teach our clients is people will buy you more than what you do. Because everybody, I mean, you got, everybody has competition that does the same thing. I mean, I'm sure there are other speaking coaches, but why am I choosing Michael? Because he speaks genuinely. He's been there and he can help you break through. But 
if, if you're listening to this, I mean, I didn't do video for a long time in my marketing, Michael, because mm -hmm. I thought I had to show up a certain way and look a certain way and speak a certain way. And it was, it was inauthentic. Right. When I went, I'm going to show up as Michael. And if you like me, great. We're going to do some cool things together. But if this offends you, if you don't like this, what you see on video, go away. Save both of us time, right? And and that really gave me the freedom, and it changed how I show up as I speak. Do you find that happening in, in people as you get them to, to get away of all the pretenses and stuff that maybe they've been taught? Here's how you do it. You know, no, not really. How do, you, how do you get people to show up genuinely? To get rid of those messages that say this is how you do it. No, no. Look, I have format. I've got a high impact storytelling and speaking format that I use. But I tell people, don't lock into this. This is a structure. Was it one of my mentors talked about uh, Michael Caine, the great actor, who said the art is in hiding the art. Ooh, right? There's a format good. you go through, and once you get used to the flow, then you start to bring yourself into it. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's the key. And and not getting focused on, oh my gosh, I'm going to make a mistake. <gasps> oh, I forgot to say that. I didn't do that. <laughs> Look, if you've given the audience value, they don't care because they don't know half the time what you didn't do or what you meant to do. That's right. And they're not going to remember the mistake unless you shine a light on it. That's right. Oh, that's so good. And, and is as important, and correct me if I'm wrong here. As important as the content is in any presentation, speech, or whatever, which is it is important, but your delivery of that, how you're delivering it and how you are actually connecting with the audiences, I, I dare say as important, if not more important, and the stories that you tell, I've, I've, I've learned this from some experience. Most people remember my stories more than what I told them, and I, I try not to get hung up anymore on every little detail. I want them to understand the flow, the big idea, and that they like me. Because then, then they're more likely to take the next step. Is that is that fair? Is that wrong? What, what are your thoughts around all that? Yeah, there is some discussion in the coaching community about this. And I will tell you that I lean a little bit more to the message. And here's why. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my favorite example. Okay. I have a dream. Okay. If Dr. King had stood up there and said, you know, I've been thinking about this problem and I got this idea. Yeah. I'm thinking that maybe we should kind of change. <laughs> if he'd gone off on this tangent and hadn't had a crystal clear message, yeah. we wouldn't remember him 60 years later. Right. Now, delivery is critical in it. It has to have passion behind it. But I'm from the school that says, if you don't have a memorable message, We'll remember. Yeah, that Michael, he shared a lot of energy. What did he say? Uh, Can I remember? Yeah, that's great. Now, with that said, if they remember the story, there's a very good chance if it's tied to your message, they'll remember the point. Yeah. And that's yeah, why we. I, my next book is coming out later this year. It's called Your Stories Suck, How to Fix Them, and How to Become More Influential and Confident Every Time You Speak. Oh, that's and great. It's not to be insulting. It's meant it's a double edged term. Suck me is not good. Also, it can suck the life out of your presentation and your audience. Yeah. yeah. You've got to make sure because storytelling is very popular today. Mm -hmm. I've watched it evolve in the last decade plus. That story has got to be centered around a meaningful message to the audience or else it's just entertainment. That's good. Which is fine if you're being brought in for enter entertainment, but most speakers right. today aren't because we can get our information, our entertainment on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Right. Speakers today, the, the demand for them to have value is higher than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's let's talk about business owners and let's get a little practical in um Length of presentation, because I mean, you know, we we live in a soundbite society, and you yes. only have six seconds or so. But to communicate, talk about length and and things, whether it's a webinar in person or something like that. How how should we be thinking about a communicating, but length because we don't want to bore people. Is that an issue if it's compelling? It, it's a terrific question because yeah, the the length of your presentation is critical if it's boring, and a lot <laughs> of them are. And here's Love the biggest it. challenge, and I see this in networking events. I was guilty of it myself for years. We walk in and we say, hi, I'm Michael Davis. I'm a speech host, and this is what I do. 
And here's what the audience is thinking. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Why? Because you're not telling them what the benefit is to them. Mm. I made this mistake for years as a financial planner, and I did it early on in my coaching. Now what I tell people is, and I'll ask a question. Have you ever heard a boring speech? Ever given one? Yeah. I fix that. I help business owners and entrepreneurs become more confident and influential every time they give a presentation. Now, that was not about me. It was about the benefits you get. Yeah. And if you can sit down the next time, and if you're watching this, I challenge you to sit down and write down three to five benefits you give your clients on a consistent basis. This is what your clients are telling you they get. Walk into your next networking event and just tell that. Then give your name and your company. They'll care about your name and company after they know what they could get from you. Yeah, that is so good because that comes back to that crystal clear message, which I talk about all the time that just grabs the attention and causes somebody to go, really, how do you do that? Now I'm exactly. in a conversation and that's right. what I want. So many people, uh, I hear this all the time. I need more leads. I need more leads. I need more leads. It's like, well, Maybe, but probably what you need is better communication because really the leads, what are you really wanting? Well, you're wanting the conversation, the appointment or something so you can talk with them. H how do you go from a lead that's sterile because it came off some to, to communicating with them on your website? A video on your website is speaking, correct? Yes. The um, funnel that you put them through, the way you have that sales call, what's that? Is that diagnostic? What? It, how are you impacting those those prospects subconsciously? Is that I don't even know if that's the right word, but it's it's I always go back to the ocean and the tide and the tide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the waves and the tide. The right. waves don't kill lots of people, but the tide does. It's it's and, and you're kind of a both and that you have the waves and how you do it on the outside, but the underneath clear message and story. Is that is that fair? I, think, I think you're dead on. It's what's your intent. And I was reminded of this yesterday, Michael. I was on a some kind of coaching call with somebody and they reminded us, what is our job? And I, if you're watching this, you and, and Michael and, and I, our job is we solve problems. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> we solve problems. Where are you? Where do you want to be? What's the gap? We fill in that gap. Now, my, I do it as a speech coach a storytelling coach. And by the way, I very rarely use those terms anymore. People say, oh, you're a speaking coach. And I'll say, well, what do you mean by speaking coach? Yes. What do you mean by storytelling coach? Our job when we're looking for more leads is to go out and have conversations and ask really good questions. That's great. And and we're not trained to ask good questions. We're, no, trained, we're, not. we're trained to throw up on everybody all the information we have which makes us sound like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? Wah, 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 wah. Well, not only that, but we sound like everybody else. And yes. If you ask good questions and be very careful, and I know we're getting away from speaking, but this ties into it. It totally does. It really does. It's when some, like when I was a financial advisor, people would say to me, well, I want this, uh, I want to have a good retirement plan so I can retire when I'm 65. Well, when I was young and insecure, I said, oh, great. And I ran that through my filter because I knew what retirement looked like to me. And I started putting together a plan. Then I'd go back to them and they'd say, this isn't what I want. I wasn't clear yeah. on what they want. What does retirement look like? Or now as a coach, I'll say, what does a successful speaking engagement look like to you? What happens afterwards? Yeah. How do you feel? What are you doing this to get leads? Are you doing this to expand your, the kind of the knowledge of your business PR? What is it? So getting clarity on what your client wants is the most important role we fulfill in the beginning. Yeah, man, that is so good. I hope everybody heard that. Go back, rewind, listen to it again, because here, here's what happens. When, and I'm thinking specifically of like in-person workshops, seminars, financial advisors do them, attorneys do them, whatever. And they fill the room with 20, 25 buying units, right? They give their presentation and they have six people sign up to book an appointment. And they say, those dumb people, why didn't they sign up, right? It's always the people. And I'm like, maybe, maybe your speaking, maybe your stories, maybe your presentation needs tweaked and you could get instead of six people, maybe you could get eight. 
if you change, if you look internally, looked in the mirror first versus out there, is, is that fair? Or is that harsh? Oh, it's a couple of thoughts on that. Number one, if you get six out of 25, that's six people you didn't have before. Right. So focus on that first and say, now, how can I go from six to eight to 10 to 12? And the, the thing I love about speaking as a, a recruiting tool for prospects is let's say half the room never would have done business with you. You saved yourself 12 one-to-one -one meetings. Right. People that would have just, it would have been a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But with that said, yes, go back and, and be willing to stretch yourself, which means be willing to go get feedback from people mm -hmm. and ask some basic questions with your presentation. What was my message? I was working with a group last night. I said, go back. And they were actually involved in the group Toastmasters, which is a great place to get feedback. Yeah. I said, go back and ask them one question. What was my message? And tell me in not, in 10 words or less. And if you consistently get the same answer, you're on the right path. But if you get met, uh, answers that are all over the place, your message isn't clear. Yeah. The problem that you have, Michael, and I have, and if you're watching this, that you have is we know our topic. It's called the curse of knowledge. Yeah, I know it so well, it's easy to forget that the people in front of me don't know. And we have to be careful with the messaging, with the terms we use. You mentioned this before. We use acronyms and, and jargon. And our audience is sitting there thinking, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not going to interrupt you. That's and they right. walk out and they never, you never see them again. That's right. And that's why it's so valuable to get feedback, whether it's a coach or people you trust who will give you feedback fair feedback to say, yeah. I don't know what that means. I need you to be clear. And sometimes that's really annoying. <laughs> You're working on this and speech. Just, I know what all this means. It's not about us. It's about them. And if you want to connect with them and get them as clients, it's critical that your messaging is clear to them. Yeah, absolutely. So how, how do you work with, with people? Let, let, let's dive, dive into this a little bit. We've got about you know ten, five or 10 more minutes, but how do you take business owners who are doing these things who might think we're, well, I'm an okay speaker. I'm okay. How, what are some, some of the ways that you work with business owners to help them become better at speaking, presenting, communicating, connecting with their audience? What are, what are some of the ways that people can work with you? Well, the first question I ask is what do you mean by okay? It's a perfect example Yeah. because sometimes we just, oh, well, okay, well, then move, move, move on. That's not, tell me, what does that look like to you? What does it sound like? What kind of results are you getting? And then once, if, if somebody's coachable, and you you know this yeah. in your business, you can tell somebody's coachable, which means they're willing to take feedback, what I call unvarnished feedback, and do it respectfully. One of the things I do is I tell people what they do well before I tell them how to improve. Mm. Not just touchy feely, but yeah. because if they don't keep doing those, they'll stop doing it. If nobody tells them, hey, that's good, they'll think, well, nobody's saying anything, so I'll stop doing that. So lay the foundation. What are you doing well? What needs to be improved? And then we just get their mindset right. How do you feel about speaking? It's okay to be nervous. It's not okay to be paralyzed by it. Right. There are some physical and uh, mental exercises I give them. Okay. So that they can be ready every time they present. We get clear on the message. How are we going to support that message? Is it with stories, with research, case studies? How do you open? How do you conclude? And the last part we work on is delivery. To your point, Michael, it is important. And we work with them to show them how to be authentic and be themselves conversational and not sound like a speaker. Now, the way we do that is one-on-one -on -one with coaching we do it with group training and also through speaking workshops and keynotes yeah i'm so glad you said that I, i'm going to dive in on that one thing sound conversational because i've, I've been around enough people in, in lots of different industries who buy a webinar on a topic that they're going to present and the webinar is already done for you it's super simple can just do our webinar and it's all scripted it's got stock images it's got junk and then all, all the feedback is well i'm just not getting success with webinars webinars don't work like, no so it's the converse it's, it's <laughs> you're smiling you've probably heard this before i have it's it's you <laughs> sorry it's you it's it's how are you coming across? If I met you at Starbucks and we were going to have coffee, how would you show up? How would you communicate? Exactly. Just sit down and talk with you. 
isn't that kind of how we're supposed to do it? Whether it's online, in person, or whatever. And and there are always things that you can tweak and make it a little bit different because yeah, in person is a little bit different because you got more body motions, you got more stage to work with. But at the end of the day, we, we communicate from the heart. Yeah. And and I love what you said earlier is is not not confusing them, not using those acronyms. Forget what you know. Take your presentation, give it to your seven-year-old, see if they even understand a lick of what you said. Because mm -hmm. if they don't, your audience probably doesn't either. Um, how long <laughs> and this is a loaded question, and there's probably not an answer. How long does it take somebody to to start seeing some success? I'm not gonna say more from being. I, I don't want to speak to being the, the world's greatest speaker, but to to actually start seeing is this is this a you had a 90 day transition or transformation, it sounded like from that financial advising guy, maybe. Um how how fast can somebody start seeing some results? Is it wow, every presentation gets a little bit better? Is that how you work with people? And it's an it's an I, I'm I'm just curious. Well, that that's a terrific question. It's it's an evolution. I tell people all the time, you're never going to give the best speech of your life until you give your last one. And who mm. knows when that'll be. Right. Don't think of it as I got to give a speech. One of the things I tell people is when you go in, what's the worst thing that can happen? And they'll give me some ridiculous notion, whatever it is. You know, I, you know, I could die on stage. All right. Well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> the realistic worst thing that will happen is you get nothing out of it. That's the worst. Let's use that as our baseline. So you're no worse off than you, but when you walked in, yeah, you've given up some time, but it's an education. Yeah. You you got up there and you realize I'm not going to die. I'm not going to pass out. I got there, said some good things, made some mistakes, move on. Yeah. The other thing I see people do is, well, I saw the speaker and oh, she was awesome. I don't want to be like her. Don't do that. Don't compare yourself to other speakers. There's one person you should be comparing yourself to, and that is you the last time you gave a speech. Mm. That's it. And therein lies one of the greatest values in my mind of somebody reaching out and working with you, Michael, is too many times I've given a presentation, a speech or whatever it is, and I don't go back and review it. And I don't have an outside person saying, how'd it go? What'd you do well? Let's look at that. We, we don't have somebody like that, and and I'm a big proponent of having coaches, right? I'm a marketing mm -hmm. guy. I've got three marketing coaches that look at my business because I'm too close to it. Right. Every time you do a presentation, you're too close to it. You need somebody from the outside guiding, directing, because at the end of the day, I love what you said. What are you trying to make? You're trying to make – really, we're all trying to get better results. I'm trying to go from six appointments to eight. Right. Okay. I probably am getting enough prospects. Some of them aren't going to buy today. That's okay. But will he remember me so that six months down the road, eight months down the road, when they are ready, they remember that guy who had that gun message, who was a great speaker, and they come back then. But you need outside eyes. And speaking is not something that we're really taught very much of mm -hmm. and how to do it well. And that's why I think you offer a tremendous amount of value to people to reach out. Because, I mean, we are just scratching the surface, dude. As you know, exactly. we, we, we could go on for hours talking about right. this because I love this whole topic. And um, how, how do people take that next step with you? What, what would be, I mean, I know probably 90% of my audience do some kind of presentation. And I want them to understand when we say speaking CPR, mm -hmm. I don't want you to just think, well, I'm not, a, I don't speak on stages. I don't give presentations like Tony Robbins. Okay, great. Who cares? If you do, if you open your mouth, Michael can help you. <laughs> Whether it's on a, a webinar, a podcast, uh, in-person presentation, virtual stages, you name it, one-on-one, -on -one, working with your team, you are always speaking, communicating, connecting. If that's you, Michael can help you. What, do you, what was that word? E evolve. Evolve. Yeah. Evolve yeah. into a better communicator through speaking. Is that is that a good summary? That's fair. And you know, that's why I don't say the terms storytelling or speaking coach anymore. Because it yeah. in the last couple of years, Michael, I've evolved to communication. Yeah. And I work with people on their sales. Now, I my main focus, my bread and butter is working on speaking, uh, speeches and stories. But those, to your point, we're doing it every day. Yes. Most of us aren't standing up and giving keynotes on a regular basis. Nope. 
that's okay because you're standing in front of your team, you're standing in front of people in your community, even in your households. But it, on a consistent basis in your business, you're communicating with them and making sure the message is clear, it's delivered authentically so that people buy into it. And today, more than ever, with all of these, uh, these devices grabbing at our attention, we have got to be crystal clear and fight through that noise. Yeah, I love that. How does somebody take that next step? Where do they find you? Um, Two ways you can reach me. Uh, speakingcpr.com is my website. Feel free to check that out. You can contact me, Mike, at speakingcpr.com. And I have a, a complimentary resource that a lot of my clients and, and non-clients have enjoyed. It's called 52 Storytelling Insights. And it just gives you a weekly five-minute audio insight into storytelling. Rather than hit you with a fire hose, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it spaces it out on a weekly basis so that within one year, you'll become at least three times more effective as a presenter and communicator. You can get that at 52storytellingtips.com. And I know you're, you're yeah, 52storytellingtips.com. Okay. And Michael, I know you're big on books. My first book, the book on storytelling, came out of those 52 tips. I'd done all the work. Somebody yeah. said to me, why isn't this a book? And I said, that's a really good question. Why yeah. isn't it? That's so awesome. it became a book. So if you've, if you've done writing, blogging, videoing, you've got a book in you. I know Michael talks about yeah. that a lot. Absolutely. That's great. And I love the fact that it's audio, five-minute audio insights. That's intriguing because um, that allows you to listen to it as you're exercising, walking the dog, doing something else, you can listen to this and become a better communicator by listening to that. I'm going to grab all of those and have those in the show notes because some of our audience, they do exercise and walk the dog or drive the car while they're listening to this, right? And so I'm going to grab all that. We're going to have it in the show notes, but re reach out to Michael and um, speakingcpr.com is the website. That's, that's probably the primary place, but show notes are going to have all of it learn how to communicate better because it's going to help your closing ratio go up because you're going to connect with your audience in a more compelling, a more authentic way. I think that's the one word that through this whole thing, Michael, you just kept coming back to is authenticity. Yeah. And that's really, really important. So thank you for um, that. Thanks for showing up here and sharing with my audience how, how to communicate better and how you, they, they can work with you and you can help them become a better communicator. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mike. You're a terrific host. I enjoyed it.